Talia the Chance and welcome to the show. So I guess it's official now. The Dell XPS 15, the Cabby Lake model with the GTX 1050 in it, has been officially announced and it's actually up on the Dell.com website. It's not available for purchase yet. I expect it to be available within maybe hours or at least within the next couple of days. There's quite a lot to talk about here, so I'll try and be as quick as I can. So let's crack on and get into it. First of all, let's just talk about some minor changes to last year's model and then i'll get on to the bigger changes later so first minor change i would say would be it uses killer wi-fi now the later models of the last dell xps 15 the current model now which is the 9550 did end up using killer wi-fi at the end of its life now if you bought one within the first six months or so you wouldn't have got killer wi-fi fingerprint scanner now so now you have the options of a fingerprint scanner so you'll be able to use windows hello so that's a great thing there so there are two minor changes and now we'll get on to the bigger changes pretty much everything else is the same apart from these bigger changes here and i'll just go to a website windowscentral.com and i'll leave links in the description to all these websites and basically here it's saying seventh generation cabby lake processors we know that i'll talk about which processors going in it gtx 1054 gigabyte a little bit disappointed it's not the ti and i'll tell you the difference between the ti and the 1050 later fingerprint scanner yes killer ethernet yep but here here's a big change here big change 97 watt hour battery now that's a fair increase in battery capacity there and with cabby lake and the battery being bigger i expect minimum an hour extra battery life hopefully we get an hour and a half two hours so that will take this from being a five six hour laptop on battery with the 4k model up to something that's around six seven possibly more hours on the 4k screen so once you get around seven hours with the 4k display that's excellent battery life considering there's no other 4k laptop that gets those sort of hours battery life there and that takes it pretty much bang on with the macbook pro in battery life terms and i got around seven hours battery life with the macbook pro it's got a lower resolution screen and after the review i was actually struggling to get seven hours battery life on the macbook pro so um, to think that this dell xps 15 with the cabby lake and the extra battery capacity will be able to get at least on par or maybe exceed what the macbook pro gets with a lower resolution screen that's phenomenal that's great so i'm really excited that it's got a bigger large battery there also on this article it's saying here it starts at 999 and goes up to around 2650 dollars us so typically in australia that'll be about 2000 to nearly 4000 now i expect that model, the 999 model, to be an i3, which will be this processor here, the i3-7100 processor, and I expect that model to have no graphics card and 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it will have the smaller battery too, and it will have the full HD screen. So that will be the 999 model. The worst thing about it is this i3 is a dual core, so I don't know why you'll be getting a 15-inch sort of powerhouse laptop to have a dual core in it. It's good that they do have a... 999 model but really we really don't want the 999 model now moving on to the next type of cpu you can get the next tier up you'll have the i5 7300 hq and this is the best bang for buck it's quad core doesn't have hyper threading so remember that it's clocked at 2.5 but i expect this to be able to maintain over 3 gigahertz no problem considering the skylake models can maintain over three gigahertz on the current xps 15 this should be able to maintain over three gigahertz indefinitely so i reckon this is the best bang for buck you're getting quad core you'll be getting frequencies in excess of three gigahertz doesn't have hyper thread so maybe if you're a video editor you want to get the i7 but if your main reason for getting this is for gaming and just you don't really video edit that much the i5 is a really good processor there and it has a TDP of 45 watt. Now the highest end CPU you can get in it will be the i7-770HQ. Now this is clocked at 2.8 gigahertz, so it's 200 megahertz faster than the i7 Skylake part the last model XPS had, and it's a max turbo frequency up to 3.8. Now the Skylake CPU I had in my Dell XPS 15, it would sit over three gigahertz 
indefinitely when I was rendering or gaming or anything like that, it would sit at around three to 3.2 gigahertz. It would never go under three gigahertz, as opposed to say the MacBook Pro, which pretty much throttles. The 2.7 gigahertz on the MacBook Pro, which is basically the same Skylake part as the last XPS had, it actually throttles down to about 2.6 under load. So you can see that the XPS 15 has better thermal management. Even if you get the 2.9 gigahertz model of the MacBook Pro, it's probably going to perform more like the 2.6 as you've probably seen on Linus's test. That That's what I'm getting to. I am seeing throttling and I am doing a performance video on the MacBook Pro and you'll see that the scores they're lower than they should be and I think it is that throttling. So basically 2.8 gigahertz out of the box. I expect this to be pushing 3.5 gigahertz consistently. So this is a great part. And what you need to know about Cabby Lake is although compared to Skylake, a low single digit in terms of raw performance, like if you put them both on Cinebench, have the CPUs going 100%, you're only going to get a small increase because of that extra frequency that the Cabby Lake part has. But in actual real world performances, I'll actually put you onto an article from PC Per, basically testing the Skylake CPU versus the Cabby Lake. And what they found is, I'll leave links to this PC Per article as well. What they found is in real world, you're getting around anywhere from 12 to 25% performance increase. Now, what's important to know is disregard this talking about the desktop part. We're talking about the laptop part. And the reason is because the Cabby Lake can get up to its turbo frequencies faster. So the speed shift works faster. It can maintain those frequencies longer and it also has a slight increase in frequency over the Sky Lake anyway. Now add that up if you open and close tabs, use filters on Photoshop, open and close documents all day. And what you'll notice is you will get 10 to 25% increase in performance because reasons I mentioned. It can quickly get up to the turbo boost speeds. It can maintain those turbo speeds and it already has that faster frequency anyway. So on a laptop, you do actually get a significant increase in performance just because of those reasons. And also something like H.264 4K content, you would use around 10% CPU on a Cabby Lake and you would use around 40% of your CPU resources on the Skylake. So you can imagine what that does for your battery. So you're already getting probably nearly an hour battery life extra just from Cabby Lake at the extra large battery that you're getting with this XPS 15. We could be seeing an hour and a half, maybe two hours extra battery life, hopefully. And you get a modest increase in the integrated graphics as well. Now I did mention the price. We're talking 999 up to 26, was it? 2650 apparently the two thousand dollar model will have 16 gigs ram 512 ssd have the 1050 graphics card and it'll have the cabby lake processor of course and the 4k screen now configure a comparable mac and that's two thousand nine hundred dollars compared to two thousand really to get the same performance that you're going to get with the cabby lake part on the xps 15 you really have to add that two hundred dollars to get that 2.9 gigahertz here so you're talking $3,100 compared to $2,000 on the XPS 15 for pretty much the same spec machine there other than the XPS 15 has the newer, better parts and faster parts. So that is a phenomenal difference. You can buy two smartphones for that. You can buy one expensive smartphone for that. The difference between the two in prices, uh, it's unbelievable. And just shows you how much of a ripoff the Mac is. Now, this is the Nantech. I'll leave links to this article here and it's basically telling you the differences between the 1050 Ti and the 1050 mobile GPU there. So they're pretty much close to the desktop versions, but there is one thing that has changed on the 1050 and that's why I want the 1050 Ti. That is, they've cut down or they've disabled 16 of the ROPs. It's basically cut down the ROPs from 32 to 16. Now I think they've done that because the GTX 1050 laptop GPU actually has four gigabytes of RAM. And considering there's not that much difference between the 1050 Ti and 1050 desktop, and the fact that both of them will have four gigabytes, they had to have something else to differentiate the two models. So what did Nvidia do? They just cut 16 ROPs off it. Now, it's unclear whether that will make much difference. Um, 
Probably not. Just in terms of raw performance, what you can expect from a 1050 Ti and a 1050 is 1050 Ti is a little bit faster than the GTX 960. We're talking desktop parts here. And the 1050 is marginally slower than the GTX 960 desktop part. So that's the performance you're gonna get. You're basically getting desktop 960 performance in your laptop. So I know a lot of people are disappointed you're not getting a 1060, which won't fit in here. It uses too much power, it's too hot. But what you need to remember is basically you're getting a GTX 960 desktop performance in your laptop, your small 15 inch laptop. That is still good. I would prefer whether it was the 1050 Ti. And in actual fact, I expect that they've added two gigabytes onto the 1050 because the desktop version only has two gigabytes that it will actually perform better against the GTX 960. And it was marginally slower. I expect it to be at least the same speed as the GTX 960 now, or maybe even surpassing it because it's getting that extra two gigabytes of RAM there. Now you can get a two gigabyte variant of the 1050, but the XPS 15 is supposed to come with the four gigabyte version. So at least we're getting the four gig version and I want it to be the 1050 Ti, I'm not gonna lie, but having a small Ultrabook 15 inch laptop that has the power of a desktop GTX 960, that was unheard of a year ago. I mean, gaming laptops maybe had that performance, but not an Ultrabook sort of 14 inch size, 15 inch laptop. So overall, I am still happy with the 1050 that is going into the Dell XPS 15. Now, just on another side note here, Dell are gonna actually be introducing a $799 laptop with a 1050 GPU in it. So that's pretty cool. And it looks really awesome. I'm actually gonna look out for that and probably review that. So that's definitely one to watch out for if you cannot afford the XPS 15, because I know not everybody can afford these sort of things. I do hope Hope they have a 4K model with the 1050 graphics card, 8 gigs RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. That's the model I want. And the reason I want that, you might think, why would I want a model like that? And of course, with the big battery too, is because I'm gonna be upgrading the RAM, I'm gonna be upgrading the SSD. I wanna put a super fast SSD in it. Typically the ones that they'll give you, although they're not slow, they're not the fastest ones you can get. So if they had that model, 256 gigabyte SSD and eight gigs RAM, that'll be perfect. As long as it's got the 4K screen, the 1050 and the big battery, that would be the best model and my recommended model. And then what you do is you upgrade the RAM and SSD yourself. I don't think they'll have that configuration. I think the minimum configuration with the good graphics card 4k screen and big battery will be that 2000 us dollar one which will have 16 gigs ram and it'll have the 512 gigabyte ssd in which case that's probably the one i'll get but i'll let you know anyway so thanks for watching guys it won't be long until we have it might be a week or two but it will be here soon. And if you want to know anything about this, make sure you subscribe. Be doing a ton of videos on this because I'm buying this out of my own money and I will we'll be doing lots of things, upgrading it, lots of tests. You want to know about it, you subscribe. Thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, guys, tally ho.